Hello, uh, today I would like to introduce uh, my paper, Robust Estimations Based on Distribution Structures Mean. My name is Tobang Li. I studied in Guangdong Technion and taking Berkeley courses now. Uh, before that, I, I would like to first briefly review the development of mean estimator. And when we consider mean estimator, we do some calculations among observations to estimate the population mean. Uh, this is a pretty fundamental question in statistics because uh, not only because mean estimation is almost everywhere, but also for some very complex estimators, it indeed containing some mean estimator inside its algorithm. So the development of mean estimator will greatly change other statistics. Uh, to, to computing the population mean, the most natural choice is, is of course the sample mean, just sum of all values and then divide by the number of values. Although the the most natural choice is, but uh, it might not be the best choice. For example, in terms of variance, uh, for the Gaussian distribution using the Lehman Sheffield theorem, and uh, you can prove that it is the minimum variance and bias estimator. Uh, but however, as the Cardassus grows, the, the Gaussian distribution is uh, the Cardassus is just three. But if the, as the Cardassus grow, this uh, this variance uh, of the sampling distribution of the mean will increasing, and it will completely break down uh, when the when when the uh, second moment is infinite. So therefore, therefore this, uh, therefore this sample variance, uh, it is, uh, if you, for, for example, another case, if you consider the medium, uh, initially it might be large, but then for a distribution with infinite mean, it is still uh, valid, and the variance is still uh, relatively small. So this this raises that first, in some cases, the sample mean might not be the best in terms of variance for some relative to school, uh, cardassus, high cardassus distribution. And then another issue is about the robustness, for example, uh, a sample from 1, 3, 5, 7, 100. And uh, uh, such 100, it might come from the sample, it might come from the population. Uh, it is possible, it is possible. Uh, it is possible that we might come from the population. Uh, there is a small book. Uh, it might come from the population. But however, uh, this chance is, is pretty low and it more likely be some contaminations or due to some uh, mistakes during the sampling collection. And if you're adding this 100, the value will become completely different compared to if you don't adding it. So this raises a concern that the sample mean is not robust. It is very sensitive to those extreme values. And for the medium, and, and so the first solution to this issue is medium. It appears first in the 6th century in the Talmud, uh, a Jewish law in order to fairly analyze the economic course. And this is a, this this idea, uh, the computational method is fairly straightforward, just uh, for if the sample size is arch, computing the middle, and if the sample size is even, uh, computing the two values near the middle, and then take, take the average. And it was rediscovered uh, several times, I recommended in L1 normal regression, and used to compute the value of the posterior density function. Uh, but if you, uh, the, the robustness of medium is, of course, very high. For example, if you're replacing this 100 with infinite, the sample mean will be infinite. For the sample medium, it is still fine. It not change, uh, including uh, it, it. No, it, it will not change. So the breakdown point. Uh, this concept was proposed by Hempel in 1968, a Lehman student. And this, the breakdown point of the sample mean is zero, and the breakdown point, uh, uh, the asymptotic, asymptotic breakdown point of the sample medium is 50 percent. Uh, there, if you consider a very large sample. Uh, removing nearly 50%, uh, replacing nearly 50% values, largest values into infinitely large, the sample, uh, this population medium won't change. So uh, the medium is highly robust estimator and uh, it might be better than the sample mean in terms of variance uh, for some relatively school and high cardiac distribution. But when we consider bias, another uh, important error in statistics, uh, there is another issue that uh, for the sample mean, uh, Hu and Robin already proved that the, uh, the, the sample mean converges completely to the population mean provided that the second moment is finite in 1947. Uh, and, but, for, uh, but for a relatively school distribution, uh, if for a symmetric distribution, the medium and the mean com uh, coincide asymptotically, so there's no bias. But for a relatively school distribution, although, the, uh, although the, uh, the variance of the medium might be better than the mean, however, if the schoolness is very small, uh, then this, uh, the, the bias of medium, the differences between medium and mean, it would be very small. But if for a very highly school distribution, uh, the medium will be very, very different from the mean. Numerically, it can, this difference can be very large. So indeed, I, I realized this issue, uh, this, I mean, it is around uh, 2018 that before that, I realized this issue that, uh, for example, for some medium and a true mean, uh, they, and, and, I, and I often found that for some school distribution, they are very different from the population mean. But at that time, I don't consider the importance of variance, uh, the, the importance of bias, and until in 2018, that PNAS published uh, a series of papers paper discussing the replicability, discussing the reproducibility and replicability. And uh, the PNAS definition about replicability is that uh, reproducibility is uh, how, how we can, re uh, it, it is as, uh, an experiment is reproducible. And replicability is the consistency of statistical results and basically cross study. So this, this is, I, re I realized this issue that uh, 
because if you're using the medium and uh, because if at one study maybe they do uh, they study the same problem but if one reported the medium another reported the mean then if was if if their population is related to school then this uh, this result is not comparable not con inconsistent right and uh, yes and, and also uh, but but uh, but there is another paper uh, i do not remember where to find it correctly uh, it is it suggested that the uh, robust statistics is very important for uh, for, for for reproducibility Yes, uh, reproducibility. There is a yes. I, I I forgot that. But maybe you can search that. Generally, there is a way that suggesting that robust statistics. Um, we should use robust statistics. This is very natural because uh, if you're using a, for example, the me uh, medium, because contamination is almost e everywhere in in the experiment in in the real world, especially in some relatively big data analysis in 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 biology in the omics analysis, and there are many contaminations or, or some outliers. And so, if you use a robust uh, robust estimator, you get the result, and then of course it is more uh, reproducible. Uh, comparing you you, you 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 get this result will be much more reproducible comparing if you use a non robust estimator because this time if you do that another time maybe there will be some contamination that affect the result, right? So uh, yes, and so this was the first time that I realized that. Uh, the importance of this issue, the bi uh, this the bias issue of this uh, robust mean estimation, and uh, uh, in in 1823, Gauss proved that uh, for any unimodal distribution, the the differences, the absolute differences between the mean and the medium, is smaller or equal to the square root of three over four omega, and omega is the root mean square deviation from the mode, and it is between one standard deviation and two standard deviation. So uh, this this is indeed probably the first work uh, he realizing. The, the differences between the medium and the mean uh, and uh, because he considered the worst case scenario so it is indeed a high school distribution so his pioneering work uh, in, reveals that the potential bias of medium uh, with respect to the mean it is bounded in unit of scale parameter so uh, and so that means there is a bias but this bias is bounded and he is under the unimodal assumption and uh, uh, in 2018 Li Wang Yang uh, they proved that uh, even for even just assuming a regularity condition we can also obtain a bound for arbitrary distribution for any quantum and uh, if you extend it to more quantiles, uh, it is possible, for example, using a uh, combining more quantile. Uh, in, in Daniel, in 1920, he analyzed a class of estimator called linear combinations of order statistics and identified that the epsilon symmetric trimming belongs to this class. And uh, for example, if you remove the first value and the last value, computing the average of the middle, and then uh, all, and this is the trimming, uh, if you remove the first two and last two, the middle, and then it is the 50% uh, symmetric trimming uh, equal to the medium, right? Uh, and this is one way, uh, folks, all of uh, the, the computational uh, exact is like that. Uh, you're assigning a zero weight in front of the in front of one, assigning a three, one over three weight. It is one over the sample size minus the trim parts. Okay, minus the trim parts. Minus the trim parts. Zero weight. Okay, and then this is the this this method. So this method is uh, minus the trim part, uh, and then uh, another. This is the uh, linear combination of order statistics, and another linear combination of order statistics introduced by, uh, invented by Winsor, introduced by Turk and Dickerson in 1960. Uh, it is also linear combination of order statistics. Uh, the computational method is that we're replacing the trim parts, replacing the trim parts with, replacing the trim parts with extreme values after we're replacing it. For example, here is uh, replacing one with three. Or, or seven with uh, ten with seven. Oh, uh, if we're moving just one, if we're moving two, and then just replacing th one three with five five, uh, seven ten with five five, it is like that. So and then the weight is one over five, one over five, one over five, one over five. Okay, and then uh, in this way, in this way, uh, and then it is one ten. Okay, okay, and okay, and then in this way. So in this way, so in this way, uh, we can computing that. So yeah. So in this. So in this way. Uh, this uh, the final is it is the sample mean. So uh, indeed, I believe when Winsor invented Winsorized mean, he is trying to, to address the uh, the variance uh, the bias issue. He is trying to address the bias issue of the sample mean. Uh, and for, I can show you an example. The above example is not very good. I, replace, I can replace it with this example. Oh, three, three, five, ten, ten. Okay. And then this uh, the first sample mean it is uh, it is thirty nine. The sum is thirty nine over five. And then this um, this trim mean is this uh, ten, uh, eighteen plus three. It is equal to six. And then uh, this this uh, the final this Winsorized mean it is uh, twenty five, twenty five, uh, thirty one, thirty one over five. Okay. And then thirty one. Oh, 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 and then this is equal to uh, thirty over five. So you can see that the Winsorized mean is better than the trim mean in terms of variance. Uh, 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 it's closer to the sample mean. 
you know, in these cases, and uh, in these relative school cases. And, uh, and uh, conceptually, this, it is not pretty difficult to understand that because if, uh, for if you trim these parts and these parts, and you're replacing this, uh, these extreme values uh, with, with, a, with a relatively also extreme values, of course, this will be uh, closer, uh, to, 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 uh, closer to the population mean if you don't replace it, right? Uh, and indeed, uh, Benik, uh, he derived uh, the bias uh, upper bounds of the Winsor rise mean based on Danielak and Rixick's work in 2003 on the trim mean, and uh, he confirms that uh, the Winsor uh, the Winsor rise mean is better than the trim mean in the worst case scenario in terms of AC, uh, in terms of bias and. Uh, uh, and the above estimators are all linear combinations of all statistics, and we just assigning a weight in in front of each values. And uh, in 1963, Hodges and Lehman proposed a, a class of estimator uh, called number or called uh, estimators based on rank test, and uh, uh, they proposed several examples. And there is one uh, important example is deduced from the Wilkinson sign rank statistics, and they deduce that uh, the medium of pairwise means is asymptotic equivalent to uh, the uh, the R estimator. Computing from the uh, from the Wilkinson sign rank statistics, and this is a uh, so this Hodge statement estimator is a very unique estimator that uh, it, it, it has they have two different computational methods and uh, asymptotically they are equivalent, and this is a uh, and I would like to first uh, show the computational method of pairwise means uh, it is one three five eight ten, and then you're computing folks uh, all the pairwise means for example one three one five one eight one ten, and three five three eight three ten, and then five eight five ten. Eight, okay, and then you're computing the mean of yeah, computing the mean of all these pairwise, and then you're computing the medium of all these pairwise means. And for example, here is two, and then here is three, here is uh, four point five, here is five point five, four, uh, five point five, six point five, yes, uh, and then uh, it is uh, uh, also six point five, and then uh, this what, ten, it, it is uh, five. okay, seven point five, nine, okay. Okay, and then uh, the medium, the medium is around uh, around around four point five or five point five. I I I'm not sure, but uh, this is the medium of uh, this. So this is the computational method of the Hodge statement estimator uh, using the medium of pairwise mean methods, and uh, this uh, computationally it is uh, much more complex than the trim mean and Winsor rise mean. But however, uh, two years later, uh, Lehman student Bickel he showed that for a symmetric population, uh, the the uh, the, the Hodge statement estimator is more efficient than the trim mean and Winsor rise mean. And we show many cases and concluded that if we don't know the contamination proportion of a popula of a sample, and then for symmetric popula for symmetric population, uh, the Hodge statement estimator is the optimum choice. And indeed, uh, this is not limited to a symmetric population. For example, uh, before that, I would like to first introduce another concept called medium of means. And uh, the medium of means is uh, instead of uh, con considering all pairwise differences, we just randomly split the samples. For example, this twenty. Split the samples into several different blocks. One, five, uh, three, ten, five, twenty. Into several blocks, and here is a uh, block. For example, uh, split into three blocks, and then the block size uh, is two. Into three blocks, the block one is this. Block, block two is this. Block three is this. Okay, and then you're computing the mean of each block. For example, three, uh, six point five, uh, twelve point five. Okay. And then you're computing the medium of means, uh, medium of these three means, so it is 6.5. This is one possible choice because it, we randomly selected this into three blocks, so we can, for example, consider another possible choice. 5, 8, 10, okay. Uh, 6.5, 2, okay, also 6.5. But sometimes, because it is a randomized uh, estimator, so sometimes we might uh, returning a different result each time. And but however, in 2016, uh, some French uh, statistician they show that a medium of means uh, 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 medium of means nears the optimal of subgaussian mean estimation with regards to concentration bounds when the distribution has a heavy tail. So this is a pretty surprising result that a, uh, a also very lemma paper that uh, that the medium of a stochastic estimator is nearly optimal. Uh, and indeed, uh, that's because the concentration bound is that uh, we consider the values uh, or some estimators relative to the population mean. The pop possibility of these differences, uh, the values relative to the population mean or the estimators relative to the population mean, the possibility of these differences is higher than the value. This possibility is lower or equal to another value in unit of, in unit of the variance. So this is the inequality that uh, we, so this inequality is similar to the uh, bias bond. But the difference is that because it is possibility, so it also considered the variance. So it is considered the worst case of the both uh, combined the worst case of both uh, variance and bias. And uh, in in statistics, another method we measure the both variance and bias. It is used root mean square uh, root mean uh, standard deviation. 
and and, uh, uh, and and so that means the medium of means it is a very fair approach that means the medium of means uh, it, is, it, has, it is very very good estimator and uh, we need to further understand the nature of medium of means it is that we sampling this uh, this this sample without replacement we sampling without replacement into three blocks right and for the hardest statement estimator we just sampling this sample sampling asymptotically we sampling this sample we, we each sample three three or two values and if we selected two values instead of if we exhausted all possible combinations each time we selected two values two values two values two values two values two values okay two values, two values. and then after you selected these two values many 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 times asymptotically it will be equal uh, and then you computing the mean it will be equal to the pairwise uh, exhausted pairwise means exhausted all possible combinations and this was proven by bitcoin friedman also hammers jason and Verbi. and their fun, uh, their foundational work shows that uh, such using this um, sampling with replacement bootstrap method it is uh, asymptotically identical to the to this using exhausted the possible combinations and so uh, so therefore we can say that because the sampling with replacement and without replacement they are uh, asymptotically identical because uh, especially for uh, this uh, subsample, this subsample size is only two, so that means we can conclude that asymptotically the bias of the hardest limit estimator it, uh, is identical to the medium of means when the block size is equal to two, and uh, and but you need to remember that the hardest limit estimator is a deterministic estimator and medium of means is stochastic estimator. So that means if you consider the concentration bound, the hardest limit estimator, although we don't know that it's concentration bound, but it must have a smaller concentration bound comparing to the medium of means, right? So it, uh, because the medium of means already nearly optimal, so you, uh, the hardest limit estimator might be just the optimal estimator. Uh, in, in, if we are assuming just a regularity condition in non-parametric statistics, it is it might be the optimal. Uh, if if we if we just consider the, a, a very high contamination because the hardest limit estimator the breakdown is very high, it is about twenty nine percent. And but sometimes if we consider uh, we know the probability density function of the underlying distribution, sometimes uh, we know that. So sometimes we know that. And uh, in this case, that in, to, in 1922, uh, Fisher introduced a method called maximum likelihood. And because uh, previously this method, we don't assume it, uh, we, they are non parametric. We do assume it, we don't assume any specific distributional assumptions uh, for this estimator. But if we, uh, but, but, but if we know the, the probability density function, maybe we can further improve the performance. And Fisher introduced maximum likelihood is solving a likelihood function and obtaining the maximum likelihood estimator. But such estimators, uh, in, in, in his examples using the Gaussian distribution and for some other examples later, they are not robust. And until 1964, Hoover proposed generalizing maximum likelihood estimation to the gen to the minimization of, of, of this equation, and he, more importantly, he pointed out this loss uh, loss function is very critical. That he showed for a square loss function, uh, the, the the m estimators is equal to the mean sample mean. For the absolute loss function, it is equal to the median. And Hoover loss function is combining the elements of both square loss and uh, absolute loss, and uh, to achieve a robustness, very high robustness. And Hoover's pioneering work opens up a new branch in statistics called robust m statistics, and this is still the optimal way if we know the probability density function of the underlying distribution and the possibility of contamination is, is very high and if we don't know uh, if we don't make any assumptions on uh, any specific assumptions on the underlying distribution and then uh, and, and also the contaminate the proportion of contamination is high uh, and then Hodges statement estimator is the best choice